everybody, this is Pam Coey, and there's a lot of noise going on upstairs because I'm working, um, you know, my studio is in the Grange, and it's a really old building, so um, right now the floors are really creaky because there's an auction going on upstairs, and for the last three days there's been a huge estate sale, and so I, uh, I couldn't resist going up there. Uh, just I found a couple of really crazy tools, and it was kind of fun, everything was really discounted, and today was 50% off day. So, what I did was I went up there uh, for the last time and I was um, uh, just looking around at what they had and I found, um, you know, a lot of old, it's, it's not that old, you know, but paint cans. Um, they were like $1.50 each, so I couldn't resist. These are all acrylic based and they had um, like a bookshelf that was quite full of um, a lot of acrylic paint that I never had a chance to use and a lot of the paintings that I've done in the past have been done with house paint so even though I'm a real stickler for um, you know archival quality um, paint I do also feel like there is a time and place for less expensive materials and I'm, I'm kind of careful you know when I use them and how I use them but Basically, you know, I started to open up the cans and stir up the paint, and that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm just going to have fun. I figured that, well, I, I think the paint is just going to be an underpainting, so no matter what happens, um, there's going to be a lot of um, kind of putting it on, letting it dry, and then, of course, destroying it, because that's what I enjoy doing. So even if it's house paint, you know, it's okay, because a little bit just goes a long way, and I know that it's going to be covered. So here on the floor, I've got two gessoed panels. They're cradled wood, and they are about two inches deep. So I've just started to pop open the caps and start to stir the paint. There's purple, and you can kind of see the cans are dusty, but there's green. Uh, I was looking for interesting colors. There's a yellow, a light green, um, kind of a pale bluish color, and you know, I think there was a red somewhere. Yeah, probably over here. So. Um, I got these for like half off, so they were like $1.50 each. And these can be quite expensive, you know, so if you're ever just wanting to experiment with house paint, you know, one thing that I used to do when I was at the old house was I went to like Ace Hardware and you look in their um, section where they have paint that they actually miss, uh, mismatched a color, they mixed it wrong, whatever, so then you get a discount on it. So anyways, I'm going to be showing you what I'm going to do with this paint. All right, so I put plastic underneath here because there's a crack between these two panels and I'm pretty sure that the paint is going to go moving everywhere. So I'm giving these paints kind of a quick stir, you know, again, before I actually um, put them onto the panel. And I've been stirring these for the last half an hour. And I keep stirring it until the little swirls go away. First I was thinking bigger circles, but now I'm thinking maybe smaller circles. They are all going to be different sizes. I think the hardest thing is just going to be reaching um, across the width of these panels, but we'll see. Okay, here comes some of this Holiday Delight purple. And again, these are all grayed down colors. None of them are very vibrant. So by, by starting out this way, it allows me to set the stage for something perhaps very saturated later, which is always fun. Okay, so there's a pour. It's a little bit darker value, kind of like that turquoise there. So much fun to play with color.
can see that it's swirling around. And as I'm using this tool, the paint's getting mixed. So I can do something like that. Okay, that's different. Oops. And then it's like, like that. Okay, kind of smooth it out. really gone gray which I like love grays that's kind of cool extra paint just get rid of it over here and I did not tape the size of this panel these panels so it's gonna be kind of an exciting mess to um, when this is all done What is down here right now is just that first initial very thick layer of house paint and it's very textured. You know the one thing I know from past experience is that yes I could take an orbital sander to this. I could sand the surface down so it's not quite so textured because I certainly don't want it to be overly textured but it would take me a long long time. And so instead of doing that I had this idea since this paint is so opaque and it's so matte, I thought what I would do is mix up some self-leveling gel that's made by Liquitex and add a little bit of like quinacridone nico azo gold and a little bit of um, something like alizarin crimson perhaps. But you know, there's a red which relates to the CAD and the nico azo gold relates to the yellow that's in here. So even though I'm not using the colors in the painting per se, I'm using related colors and it would be a very thinned out glaze. So it's acrylic and it's dry and by adding the self-leveling gel, what I'm thinking it will do, and I never know for sure, but it's going to then fill in the nooks and crannies, it'll level itself out and then by the time it dries, it should be a lot more level than it is now, plus it'll have a glaze over it. And then I can reassess what to do next. So that's what I'm going to try and do right now is mix up my self-leveling glaze. I have this, um, this is the Liquitex uh, pouring medium that I like to use. It's already been open so I had written that on the lid here. Uh, there, I don't think there's enough in here though. Like I opened up the lid and I just don't think there's enough in here for those two panels. So I'm opening up another container and I'd rather have, you know, too much than too little because if I run out then it's just going to be, I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But anyway, so I just opened up this new one and I'm going to add some to this other container here. And these gallon containers are kind of tricky. I mean, they're, that's kind of like why I huh, um, like to, to move things that are in these gallon containers uh, with the tops into, say, the jugs because the jugs are a lot easier to, to handle. And when you get this type of acrylic medium all over the, the rim and the edge and then you put the lid back on, as most of you know who work with acrylic, um, when you open up a lid again on a container like this, um, if it's dried in there you're going to get 
some of that dried polymer medium and then it can drop into this whole bucket here and then I don't like that because it's a different, you know, it's dried and then that can end up on your painting. So then you have to really um, tightly seal this again. Um, so Liquitex containers are not too bad, but there are some brands that really have these, like, look at this. See, this is the plastic that comes off. You can kind of see it just dries around the edge. But this one's almost at, it's almost empty. That's why it's gotten this way um, after being opened so much. So anyways, here is more now. I've got more in there, and I think and I hope that that's enough. If not, it's okay. I can always mix up more. So these are the colors. Um, here is, and they're golden, uh, fluid acrylics. And these are just some of the, the favorite glazing colors I have. So quinacridone nickel azo gold is one of them, and then the quinacridone crimson. Um, you know, and again, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because I don't want to add too much of this either. I, I don't want a lot of color. I just want to, you know, tint um, this self-leveling gel. So it'll be kind of see-through. Okay, now here's what happens. You can see how that is. I just added a few drops, right? And so when I first put this on, it's going to look really weird because... First of all, when you do anything like this with a self-leveling gel, it's white, it's whitish, and then when it dries, it's clear. In this case, it's not even gonna be, it's gonna be tinted now with the, these colors, and I'm not really gonna do a test to see what it looks like when this is dry, so it's kinda just, as usual, flying by the seat of my pants, and I'm not gonna really worry about what it looks like I just want to get it on the surface, let it self-level itself out, and, um, and then just deal with it, whatever it turns out to be. You know, whatever it turns out to be, um, that's fine. I don't really care at this point. So I do have also a adapted tool I'm going to show you. I just added a long handle to this um, squeegee tool. It's actually a tool that printmakers use. I'm going to try and use that to level out um, this solution because it'll be a lot easier than bending over. So I will try that as well.